Muy buenos días, muy buenas tardes, muy buenas noches. Este es Luis Alberto Jovel desde Australia, trayéndoles un video que no es de mi autoría, sino de Seiko Woods. Y ustedes van a poder ver en las notas del video las, eh, el, el link a este video que, estoy hablando, que van a poder ver. También van a poder ver un link donde van a, a poder, a, donde si no saben cómo hacerlo, van a poder activar los, eh, los subtítulos de los videos para poder así ver lo que están diciendo, porque lo que van a ver es en inglés. Van a ver a Dennis Swanson, que uh, lo han visto en otro video aquí anteriormente. Y Dennis Swanson es la persona que pasó 25 años en el, eh, trabajando con, en el ministerio de John MacArthur como vicepresidente o vicedirector, como ustedes le quieran decir, del de seminario y de la universidad. Eh, estaba intercambiando él, a veces trabajaba con uno, a veces trabajaba con el otro. Pero pasó 25 años ahí y oyó y supo mucho de las cosas que en español jamás se han dicho. Jamás se han oído nombres también que él va a mencionar, que ustedes nunca han visto controversias en Estados Unidos que ustedes no se dan cuenta, que yo nunca las he hablado porque en realidad no viene el caso, porque ustedes, no, mi, ustedes mi público, nunca van a, a saber de esto. Pero también van a oír cosas de John MacArthur que jamás yo las he dicho, pero que Dennis Swanson, que fue el que vivió esas cosas, las va a contar. Y van a conocer una cara de John MacArthur que nadie ve casi. Solo aquellos que están en el círculo íntimo como Swanson estuvo por más de dos décadas. Así que yo les invito a quedarse en este video, eh, a sentarse, a oírlo. Van a tener que leer, aquellos que no saben inglés. Pero van a quedar asombrados de lo que ha pasado por todos estos años. Las personas que este hombre conoce, las, las, los casos de abusos, los casos de, de tanto de abusos de poder, abusos de dinero, abusos de, de, de mujeres, de, de niños, que este hombre tiene conocimiento a primera mano. Y lo último que pasó este año con Christianity Today, eh, cuando a uno de, sus, de los ancianos de, de, de la iglesia de Grace to You se le pidió que volviera a investigar el caso de, de, de Eileen Gray, de sus hijas que, que fueron abusadas. Y este hombre dijo que sí, que tenía que pedir perdón. Y como inmediatamente MacArthur lo echó de la iglesia, quitándole eh, ser anciano y también diciéndole que se fuera. Entonces, todo esto está candente en Estados Unidos. Por eso es que el ministerio de MacArthur en Estados Unidos ha perdido mucho, mucho peso, mucho, mucho respeto y mucho, mucho apoyo. Por eso es que están esperando que aún en Latinoamérica lo sigan y lo apoyen. Pero yo creo que es tiempo de que el pueblo latinoamericano, así como pasó en el caso de Ravi Zacarayas, abra los ojos con respecto a Joe MacArthur. Yo los dejo para su consideración. Y espero que puedan hacer caso a un testigo ocular de lo que ha pasado y sigue pasando, las atrocidades que siguen pasando en Grace to You. Que Dios les bendiga. And with that being said, it's not an easy thing for brothers uh, like this gentleman uh, to come and has been able to uh, share his testimony uh, and had to go through the experiences that he did. But of course, by God's sovereign providence, we know all things work together for good. Right. So I want to introduce introduce to some of you. He was the former uh, VP at the uh, Master Seminary University. Uh, you may have seen and heard his story on uh, Julie Roy's on her channel. Uh, he has uh, he has been in ministry at the Grace Community Church formerly for over 20, about 25 years, about 25 years. And so uh, I've had him on my channel before, but to some of you, he may be new, but to some of you, he may be familiar. So without any further ado, let me introduce to you Dr. Dennis Swanson. Hello, my brother. Thank you so much for coming on. How are you? Good. Wait, Seiko, good to see you again and be with you tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, just wanted to uh, express my appreciation to you, uh, sir. Uh, you definitely have uh, encouraged me. And um, I, I told you before last year when I heard about your story, 
uh, I had to uh, make sure that I brought you on because um, you really um, kind of, I believe, set the tone and the stage for what we're seeing right now uh, occurring in the body of Christ. Uh, even though people are um, afraid, God does have a remnant. We understand that everybody deals with situations differently. Uh, but, you know, when he raises up men um, to to do the the um, the, the things that would not cons be considered popular, the unpopular things, um, everybody's not wired for it. And so people like yourself and, 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 uh, and uh, Elder, uh, former Elder uh, Cho, uh, Han Cho, um, I have to tip my hat to you all and salute you, you gentlemen, because, again, I know it is just the beginning of what we're going to be see unfolding uh, as these days go on. Uh, people are going to come out and speak up and speak out uh, because God is getting tired of the of the of the abuse and the mistreatment and the the gaslighting and the manipulation that we see go on uh, in our churches today. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. But. Tell, tell those who may not know you, Dr. Swanson, a little bit about yourself, um, your ministry, um, and, 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 and your, your, uh, your, your, uh, your experience. I was on staff as a uh, faculty member at, at the Master's Seminary University. Go right ahead, sir. Well, I, I started, uh, um, I was saved back in about 1972 when I was in high school. So I've been uh, uh, doing, doing ministry for a long time, involved in church for an awful long time. And uh, uh, I was a L.A. policeman for 15 years and um, main, a senior officer working traffic accident investigation for the most part, although I, my, my first two years were just as a regular patrol officer in the Watts Housing Projects. So it was a, uh, a good learning experience for me in, in, in that regard because I think in my high school there was, uh, um, I think there was two um, African-American graduates in my high school graduation class. So I, I had no real contact with the black community at all. And then I ended up being a policeman in, in Watts. And we're only, when I got there, we're only, you know, just a little over 10 years on the other side of the riots. So it was, and there was still a lot of visible. And I learned some good things there. I learned that, you know, people, for the most part, they were, they were stuck in a terrible economic and, and they were working to get their kids or grandkids out of there and um, uh, and I realized that just like everywhere else 97 98 percent of those people were good people I mean not from a Christian point of view but just good solid people trying to help their kids and grandkids and you have the couple of percent that are just like everywhere else you know in in Bel Air, a couple percent of the kids are bad kids too. So it was a, uh, it was a good experience. I uh, tore up my knees and I was stuck in an office job, and that's not why I got in the police department for. So I uh, left the department. I went into education. Uh, was going to go into ministry. Got my um, master of divinity for master seminary. Um, went off and and uh, was was pastoring a church in uh, Gardena, California. Um, one thing led to another, and I ended up having to go back to Santa Clarita where we had our house um, because the people that were living there kind of left abruptly without uh, a lot of notice from me. And uh, I couldn't traverse from there to Gardena. So they found a new pastor and I took a job at Master Seminary working in the library um, within a I worked my way up. I ended up being the uh, director of the library not long after that. And then um, uh, after a few years, I forget how many years, I was there for about 25 years. At the end of it, I was in charge of the library. I was in charge of accreditation. And I was also then made the vice president over operations of, of the seminary. So. Basically, it, what, everything that wasn't related to faculty or academics, I was in charge of. And then um, in between, in terms of ministry, I, I, um, I, I discovered what kind of pastor I was like, what kind of pastor I was, which I think is important for everyone in ministry. What kind of pastor are you? Mm. And, and I discovered that I was an interim pastor. Mm. I, I've had about 18 different interim pastorates over the years. Um, in fact, I'm working on a book in that regard right now. And it's, it's actually carried over into my professional life because when I left Master Seminary, when, when I was 
um, escorted out of Master Center. <laughs> yeah. um, I uh, was looking, I, I still need to work. I found, I became the, the Dean of Libraries at the University of North Carolina mm. at uh, Pembroke, which was our historically American Indian school. And um, I, I turned 65 a few years ago and thought I, maybe I should retire. And I did and went to, uh, came down here to Florida where I am right now and uh, um, spent about six months in Cocoa Beach, went surfing every day. And after a month of surfing every day, I realized I wasn't ready to retire yet. So I uh, am connected with a, an organization that provides interim leadership, uh, executive leadership to universities and higher ed. And I just finished a year-long interim deanship at a university in the Chicago area. Mm -hmm. so I lived in Chicago the last year until just a few months ago. And um, probably within the next... Uh, couple of weeks I'll be uh, settling into another interim or, or, or another dean's job at another school. At least that's my hope. Well, you're a busy man, sir. <laughs> well, I've been, I've been staying busy. I'm actually, you know, kicking around this idea of a book, how to, how to be an interim leader mm. and uh, working on that. So I've got some experience there. Um, I will say one thing about this. Someone's talking about should, should MacArthur step down? And I know this isn't on our topic, but uh, one thing that has struck me recently again was all of the, the several people I knew over the years that were elders that were made to get off the elder board there because of something their adult child had done who didn't even live at home anymore. But when that came home to MacArthur's house, when his, his son was indicted by the Securities and Exchange Commission, I mean, for, for fraud. To my and, Mark and, MacArthur, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. And, um, yeah. uh, and, and nothing. He, mm -hmm. you know, they've, they've, they've decided that it's not, uh, doesn't apply to him or, or whatever. But uh, I, I just find that uh, disingenuous at several yeah. levels. Yes. Yes. Well, of course, you already know we're going to be discussing these things. So whatever you uh -huh. uh, want to uh, feel liberty to do, sir, you, you definitely have the uh, the floor to do that sure. um, as well. So let's 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 talk about it a little bit. Um, you know, the the WASC report, um, you, you, you were doing with accreditation. Can you let people know what the WASC uh, stands for? The uh, the acronym well, WASC, WASC is the Western Association of Schools and Colleges, and they are the accrediting agency for higher ed in California mainly, but some of the other islands and, and regions around there. And, and people don't understand accreditation sometimes. The, the accrediting um, people at the associations are, they exist to do a couple things. And one is to make sure your school is doing what you say it's going to do. You have a you know, school has a statement, a mission statement. They have a purpose statement. They have um, goals and objectives. And the accrediting people come in and say, okay, are you doing those things? You say you're going to do them. Are you doing it? Are you running your programs with integrity? Are you running your programs with fiscal responsibility? Because without accreditation, you cannot get guaranteed student loans. You can't get federal financial aid for your students. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's really the way to make sure there's integrity in that process. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the uh, and WASC is a very good uh, um, organization. I've I've done I've been on visiting teams for them to other schools like USC and um, up in uh, Sacramento State and other places, along with some other private schools. And 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 they have a good process. They're very very well respected. They are they are not out to close schools. They are not anti Christian. They are they they. they they don't, that doesn't come into the equation for them. And um, when I was leaving, when I was, when I was being told that I was not going to be retained, I reminded them that I said, you know, we're up to our hips with accreditation issues right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I said, you're probably, you're making a mistake, but part of the, the, system with accreditation too, is the relationship the accrediting board has with the, the, representative on campus. And we had a very good relationship. They knew if I told them something that that was the truth. Um, 
And they said, oh, we have got, we've got it all taken care of. It's no problem. It's all under control. Well, you know, nine months later, they were on probation. Um, and, and, and because of issues that I, we were trying to address, I was trying to get them to address it, and, and we were unsuccessful. And then when I wasn't there to push the buttons anymore, then it got let go. Um, they struggled. They were on probation. And usually the way that works is you're on probation for a year. And you either get off probation or you lose your accreditation. Well, losing accreditation is, um, it, it, it's, that's like the kiss of death for uh, a college and university. Wow. And so, I mean, because you can't get, you, you, you can't get financial aid. You can't, your students can't get anything. You're, you're really limited on what you can do. Mm. And, uh, they, they got a new guy in. They got uh, um, a new president to come in. Part of the problem was that they didn't really trust MacArthur to be president of the school because mm-hmm. um, of the conflicts he had with all these other ministries. And so they uh, um, got Sam Horn in as the president. I've, I've known Sam for years. Good wow. guy, solid guy, been president elsewhere, really knows education and really got and, – and, and they brought him in to help him get him off probation. And he did. He can, he went to WASC. He worked with them. He did all the right things. And they got off probation. And then six months later, they fired him. Just and, like that. Uh, just like just that. Just like that. So, and, they brought him, they, so they brought him on, praised yep. him, and then... And then showed him the door. And then they've got... Uh, uh, and, and, and I've seen the paperwork. I've not seen, you know the details, but I know currently the seminary is trying to get its own accreditation um, from the uh, um, uh, I th- the Association of uh, Bible Schools and Colleges. And basically, I, th- I think, I, I'm, I'm guessing at this point, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I think the college and the seminary are on the path to splitting again. Wow, wow. And, uh, so I, we'll see how that works. I mean, they also dropped out of the... Um, uh, uh, ECFA. ECFA, that's right. Yep. And, yep. and for, which is the, the Evangelical uh, Society Account- for Financial yeah. Accountability. That's it. And um, I, I don't know what was behind that, but that, that ranks as one of the dumb ideas of all time. I mean, there, there's, there's nothing to it really to belong to. You, you affirm to do things honestly and ethically and provide uh, annual statements of your report, which they have got to, which they have to fill and send to the government anyway. So I, I'm not sure what the issue with that was, but uh, it, it's not good uh, public relations, that's for sure. Dr. Swanson, don't you remember when people like uh, Benny Hinn, um, mm-hmm. Creflo Dollar? Um, I mean, you name it, any of the any of the the, the low hanging heretics. You know, mm-hmm. uh, would would not want to submit their financial statements or submit or be a part of the ECFA, how, I would say us, quote unquote, us on the other side would say, you see, that's, that's, that's suspect. That's, you know, why wouldn't the church, why wouldn't the ministry want to, you know, have their finances to be disclosed to an organization that's been around for, for, for decades. Right. And so uh, uh, one, one person said that Joel Osteen is a part of the ECFA. So that's kind of an indictment. If, if Lakewood church and you know what they're about, they're part of the ECFA, (laughs) but, but Grace Community Church or Grace to You or the Master Seminary University, if they don't want to be a part of that or they pull their organization from that, shouldn't that be some type of red flag? Shouldn't that send some type of message? Oh, well, it, it, it is to me because I, I just don't. Um, it, it, but it's it's common. Look at look at you or Julie Royce and or others, newspapers, the New York Times and other large who have tried to get. Or Christianity Today, who recently who who tried to get some statement out of Grace Community or the elders or something, and they just refused to respond. Mm-hmm. They, I, and and to me, that's um, just not an. Uh, it's I don't think it's a a biblical way of handling things mm-hmm. to just ignore uh, requests and make no statement, and it certainly doesn't look good. Um, right. To, to not, you know, provide some uh, uh, some answers to some serious questions. Sure. Yeah. 
This, and um, yeah, it was like the uh, uh, well, the whole thing with David Gray and Eileen. You know, well, we don't talk about discipline or things like that. You know, we keep that private. Well, how about the fact that she resigned her membership? You know, before they disciplined her. Yeah, and and they said, well, you know, we we can't let people resign. Well. Church membership is voluntary. That's right. You can't make someone be a member of your church. And then, um, uh, sorry, I'm fussing with these earphones. But oh, no, you're fine. They, That's okay. They, they, they um, you can't make someone stay as a member of your church, especially when your sole purpose, obviously, is to kick them out right. and embarrass them publicly. Um, so I, I, the 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 discipline process at Grace. Even when I was there, all the years I was there, I, it was always um, unsettling at a certain level. It, they, it was often done during the communion service. Um, it was often done at night, and I, I and I never saw the 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 purpose for for mixing a celebration of communion yes. with with. Um, the darker side of church business, and I, right. and I don't do not discipline. Sometimes it has to happen. Right, I understand. Um, yes, yes. But it, and but they disciplined her, but they didn't discipline him when he was sent to prison. And he's still in good standing with the church as far as being a member. He is not. He has not had to, to my knowledge. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no statement saying that David Gray is not in good standing with Grace Community Church. In fact, no, they funded I mean, they, his prison ministry until they were busted and exposed. Yeah, no, they were they were they were funding him. They were he was, and it, it's. Someone said, uh, I forget who it was. One of the online people said, "Well, that must be because the the elders have come to the conclusion that he was innocent." Well, if that's if that's their thinking, then they're goofy because yeah, you don't get convicted and sent to prison for twenty one years to life on a whim. Right, and then and then get your parole denied, and another ten, he's going to be in prison the rest of his life. Yeah, yeah, essentially, yeah. and for for horrible, horrible things that he did. Yes, yes, and, and he's exactly where he should be. Amen, amen. And 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 we're not saying that people can't be uh, saved or anything like that, but sure. it, doesn't, it doesn't remove the consequences for for what you've right. done. Uh, I, I don't believe that he was a Christian. When he did those things, I, I just don't. And so for 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 Grace Community Church, particularly, particularly John MacArthur, to treat Eileen Gray as the as the villain and right. David Gray as the victim. And then even and didn't even want to see this woman to this very day. This woman has yet to receive any communication from from John MacArthur. No, no apology, any of that. And and so when when I hear people, and that's why I populated one of the comments, uh, because this 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 gentleman, um, he has you know at one time, uh, he was he was basically demanding that John MacArthur uh, step down and be removed, and now he's saying that John MacArthur does not need to step down. Well, <laughs> I, I, and and I'll I'll just put a challenge, you know, a please, challenge. Please uh, look at. Look at his life, and I mean MacArthur's life, right. and all the stuff that he's got recorded. Show one place where he has ever apologized for anything. Mm. Mm. I mean, I, 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 if you can find one, you're a better person than I am because I have I've never heard him admit that he made a mistake or that he's wrong or apologized for doing anything. Dr. Swanson, I thought I was the only one thinking that. I thought I was the only one observing yeah. that. I, I mean, and I looked. I mean, I matter matter of fact, correct me if I'm wrong, Doctor Swanson. He w he did a Q and A session on the mark about the market of beast. The questions about the market of beast was presented to him, and he said mm -hmm. that you know those who take the market of beast, yeah, they can still be saved. But now I have his I have his commentary. His commentary says the opposite. Matter of fact, his commentary is, is correct. But what yeah. he said in the Q and A is totally that was heresy. And yet, and yet, Phil Johnson tried to cover it. He tried to minimize it. Uh, uh, you have other individuals that did uh, video defenses of for MacArthur, and 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 and, uh, and and you have all these people defending him. I mean, I've I've done videos about this man for the past 
maybe almost 10 years off and on mm-hmm. about some of the things that he said and that he's done. And it's not it's not a mere uh, slip of the tongue or Freudian slip. I'm talking about statements that could that, that can carry grave and eternal consequences. Oh, Telling sure. people that it's okay to bake a you know that it's sinful for a Christian baker to bake a wedding cake for a sodomite or homosexual homosexual wedding, and then turn around three years later and say it's not a sin. I mean, it just it just where does it where does it where does it really stop, yeah. Doctor Swanson? Well, and, and there's um, he never he never apologized to me for taking a swing at me at a basketball game once. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, <laughs> Wait come on now, Doc. Come we were, on. Now, we, I didn't even we, know that. <laughs> what? We, had a, uh, we used to have a, a pretty good Saturday uh, basketball league. And, and wow. he was still, I was younger, and he was younger and still doing so high. And uh, <laughs> I, I think this is the last game, but he um, – he gave me a shoulder and knocked me into a back brick wall and I stood up to him and, and told him I didn't appreciate that. And, uh, wow. and he took a, we had, uh, there was one, one of the staff pastors and, and his brother who are on my team, uh, you know, and I was a policeman then. And, and so I, I wasn't, we, we, we sort of had to be separated a little bit. And are you um, say, how, okay, hold it. That's why, how long ago was this? How many, how many, so how many years? Have you been on Seventy-six. Okay, so y'all were young, but still, nonetheless, he was in ministry. He was a pastor. Oh, yeah. He was a pastor of the church. We were still we were playing in the gym where we still were meeting at that time. The building hadn't been built yet, but uh, he's, what? he's kind of he's kind of thin skinned. So he he tried to go Bill Lambeer on you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, but he, he, he it was it it was silly because. Um, he was so slow that I just got you out just, of the way. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what? Since you're bringing up sports, let's let's talk about his. Uh, if you can, if you can recall, I know Paige Paige Rogers. She did excellent work uh, mm-hmm. about his uh, about his football career. Um, did you want to <laughs> Did you want to touch on that a little bit? Well, I, it ties into the lies, I think, in my opinion. Right. I mean, the thing is, the idea that he always put out that that. He was contacted by the Cleveland Browns, by Paul Brown, to replace Paul Warfield, who had broken his ankle. Um, It's absurd. I mean, he played three college games in a very small, uh, it it wasn't even, um, uh, it was like NAIA level (laughs) college. He, he He rushed, you know, for three yards in a total of two games. I mean, <laughs> he, he was, he, he, he was a certainly above average athlete, certainly not pro level. Wow. Um, and, and, um, I'll tell you another funny story. We used to play golf, <laughs> uh, the, Seminary, we'd have a beginning of the school year, the seminary faculty, we'd get together and play golf. And uh, he, he would generally play. And we'd like everywhere else, we had a, uh, you know, one of the holes would be a long drive hole. Whoever hit the longest drive would get something. And uh, one year, and they and he and Mayhew always played together. They were always the last group through. And and the last year it was on the 18th hole. And, and I outdrove him by, you know, 20 or 30 yards and, and wow. um, he was really mad what he came, well he he came up and hit the ball he i guess he hit a decent drive i didn't see it and um uh came up came up and thought he was going to put the marker where his ball was and, mm-hmm. and they couldn't put the marker they thought it was gone and oh, oh it's up there you know it's still further away i wasn't a good golfer but i could hit the ball a long way so is so you saying he, he is he was he a is he a sore loser? I mean, it, yes. Oh my gosh, <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> he doesn't like to lose. He doesn't and, and never admits that anything's wrong. Wow, he, he's never made a mistake in his life. Well, well, speaking about speaking about mistakes, let's talk about the plagiarism. Um, oh. You know, you you wrote you wrote a chapter in uh, in the book. Was it biblical counseling? Uh, and Introduction was- to biblical counseling when it first came out. Um, I worked with Wayne Mack. Mm-hmm. Um, I helped him edit it. I helped him put it together. I did um, 
an annotated bibliography at the end, and I also did the chapter on frequently asked questions. And so mm-hmm. I, we, we created the questions, and we sent them out and had people respond to them. And I, I wrote a couple of the answers myself, and um, it came out. It, and it's, you know, if you look at the original edition, it says, you know, compiled and edited by Denison Swanson. Mm-hmm. And then there, there was two other books. There was a preaching book, Introduction to Biblical Expository Preaching, and then there was a another book on pastoral ministry. And uh, several years later, MacArthur, they took those three books, preaching and pastoral ministry and counseling, and repackaged them into something called the MacArthur Pastors Library. Mm-hmm. So when the new one came out, I was working at the seminary, I was still at the library, and when the new one came and the counseling, I looked at it just to see what it was, and lo and behold, my name wasn't on the chapter for frequently asked questions anymore. It was it mm-hmm. now said by um, by John MacArthur. Yeah. And so it, I went to my boss and I said, well, what's this all about? And he just shook his head and said, there's nothing we can do about it. So I let it go. And I, and I did for a long time. For a long time, I was annoyed by it. But I know recently, then I, I finally complained. I, I actually contacted Word Publishing, who did it. Mm. And they looked in, and, and they weren't happy either. And they, they assured me that the next time it's printed, uh, they, would change it, they would change it back to the original titling. I have mm. not seen one yet. And they said when the, in the electronic version that they would immediately change it. So if anyone downloads the electronic version, now I assume it has my name back on it. But, but you're uh, not sure if it does, though, huh? I haven't seen one, so okay. I, but I haven't had the opportunity to go look. Okay. Um, I know Phil Johnson made some ridiculous statement that that there was a uh, um, a license, uh, uh, that, 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 that there was an agreement that, they, that, that allowed them to change the names of, you know, who did a chapter, which is absurd. Phil Phil knows less about copyright than he does about theology, I think. But uh, <laughs> it, 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 but it's not true. It, it doesn't work that way. Mm. And uh, um, so it's 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 one. It's silly, and two, two. And you keep noticing these things. You know, it's the MacArthur Pastors Library. Mm-hmm. It's the MacArthur Study Bible. It's the MacArthur this or that or the other. And that's that's just problematic. Mm. I mean, everything has to have his name on it. And they think that's well because that's what sells. Well, quality sells. Mm. And, and, mm. and things that are, I mean, it, it can be tangentially related to the church or the school or, or even him without having his name on it. Right. Um, it, it, it's just a, um, it, it's, it's just silly. Plus, you know, he, he doesn't, it's, it's patently obvious to anyone who's done work that, that he doesn't write his own books. I mean, there have been several ghostwriters over the years Phil was Phil came in with the Gospel According to Jesus and did a lot of books after that. And there's been two others since then. And if you just read, just grab four books and read them from different decades, it's clear that the same person did not write these books. Um, there was someone before Phil. He was uh, I can't remember his name. He was a Reformed Episcopal minister, taught English, but he was the original ghostwriter. And I always say, I mean. If you look at like the original copies of Hal Lindsey, Late Great Planet Earth, it says Hal Lindsey, but in very big letters right under his name, it says Carol Carson, his ghostwriter. Mm. At least the cover of his books, he had the integrity to tell people that uh, I had someone help me, you yeah. know, because he wasn't a good writer, apparently. Um, I, I, I have a copy of. MacArthur's MDiv thesis, mm. you know, which I have to assume he wrote. Um, and styles don't change over the years too much. He and and is he is in in that piece. He's not a good writer. Um, not 
not great. It's not terrible, but it's not. Mm-hmm. He has a particular way, and and that style is never repeated in any of the books. It's wow. I, I just you know, you you put your name on something, yeah, and you had a well. It's like the, the study Bible. Yes. Well. MacArthur never preached a lick through the Old Testament except a short series through Daniel and a short series through Zechariah, you know, 35 years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, so all of the all of the notations from for the Old Testament in the MacArthur Study Bible were all created by the seminary faculty. I heard that um, story before. I, I, I've I mean, had and, seminary and, students and, tell me that same story. Yeah. And, um, and even some of the New Testament, I mean, some of his... He'd preached through some of the New Testament, and it was dated. Um, there was more up-to-date information, and mm. um, you know, so those got rewrote, rewritten as well. And and he had he'd come in and, and truth be known, Dick Mayhew did the MacArthur Study Bible. Without Dick Mayhew, the Study Bible never gets done. And, now, uh, do you remember? Do, were you were you at the 2003 Shepherds Conference? In fact, I remember playing the audio because I, I was talking about. Uh, I think it was in the series that I did or the video that I did is John MacArthur a Christian. And what I did was I played one of the audio clips of John MacArthur uh, at the 2003 Shepherds Conference. And I think it was general session number one. But um, mm-hmm. he he was talking about um, before he had preached his sermon, he talked about the study Bible. And he said, he said, writing that book, writing this, writing this book, it was a, was a, was a, <laughs> I know. I'm already laughing because you're already saying no, I, no, no. I, I, I <laughs> he said spending hours this. upon hours and hours. He said like four, I think he said 14 hour days for seven days a week and for an entire year. He said just pouring over each note, each this and each verse. And I'm like, and I was just impressed because I was a new, I was a new believer, and I'm like, man, he did all that and wrote this and wrote the study Bible, you know? And and now here you no. telling us that's all all a cap. All yeah. lies. It was, it, he'd show up once in a while. They'd set up an office where they had all the paperwork and stuff. And, and there, Dick was there all the time working on it. MacArthur would show up once a week for a few hours and then he'd leave. Um, now, that doesn't mean he wasn't doing something at home, but I don't right. think so. Yeah. I mean, it was, um, and, and he was still preaching on Sundays. So he was prepping for sermons and and whatever else, but um, it, it's it, it's becoming and and things are becoming more and more insular there, and it's very concerning. I mean, now they have their own Bible version, mm-hmm. which isn't a the new LSB. Version. It, the LSB, I yeah, think it is. The, the Legacy Study Bible, or yes. the Legacy Standard Bible. It's not a new version. It's it's uh, an old New American Standard tinkered with. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, it's and it's it's not terrible. It's readable, but it, it's not a it's not a to call it a new translation is mm-hmm. not certainly not accurate. Yeah, um, yeah. So now they have, but I mean, but you know why they. I know why they do it. It's it's royalties, of course, because I mean, for like the first issue, the first MacArthur Study Bible came out in the New King James version. Yes, yes. Because Thomas Nelson, the publisher, owned the rights to the New King James, so they didn't have to pay themselves to use the text, because you know they didn't know. No one knew if the Study Bible was going to be successful or not. You don't know that until it comes out. Mm-hmm. And so that's what they did. Um, they couldn't buy hymnals anymore. The the hymnals that the church had used for years and years and years, they yes. stopped printing them. And so they created their own hymnal. What? And, and yeah, the hymnal they use now is one that they the, the church created, what, five, six, seven years ago now, because they couldn't buy, the publisher quit printing the ones that they had been using for years and they'd used mm-hmm. up all their supply of them. So they created their own hymnal. And I, it's, like I said, it's just insular. It's just, yeah. um, I, I, I don't have, uh, I don't know how, I mean, well, you've seen him in the last couple of weeks on online. He's, he's not well. 
that's that's patently obvious. Yes. Um, what happens when he dies? Um, I, I, it, it, I did. I've done church consulting, and that was actually my. I studied under Tom Rayner at Southern mm -hmm. Seminary, in that, and um, last time I checked, I don't know what it is now, but at one point, sixty percent of the people who attended Grace Community Church mm -hmm. lived more than twenty miles away from the church. You said more than twenty miles. Yeah. Wow. Twenty miles or more, and and um, you know how many of those people are going to keep coming when right. John MacArthur's not there? Right. Um, yeah. I, I, I have no idea, but it's a, uh, um, well, you know, when he passes, when he dies, he passes, that church is going to, I'm talking about the, the day of his funeral. It'll, he, it'll be a, uh, it'll be interesting, but I mean, it's interesting, you know, when, when Grace Church took off, when it started really growing back in the, the, by the late 70s, by 1980, when I checked the records, um, there was actually 25 fewer churches in the San Fernando Valley mm -hmm. than there had been before Grace Community took off. Right. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, it, it closed a lot of churches. Man. People leaving their church to go and listen to the new famous preacher. And that happens everywhere, but it, it's, it shouldn't. Right. But, um. There was one church, First Baptist of Canoga Park, was they had they were on the radio. They had a big ministry. Had, they were nearly two thousand people, and in about a five year period, most of those people moved to Grace Community Church, and the, the church was down to a hundred people. Man, so, so are, this this attitude of uh, it, it is safe to say that there is a cult. A personality or uh, idolatry, and at, at Grace Community Church, and let me just give an example. Let me get your reaction to this. Five percent of John MacArthur is more than the entire evangelical world put together. Absurdity, idolatry, and absurdity. <laughs> it would take forty thousand John MacArthur's to 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 fill his shoes. These are statements by Phil. These are statements by by uh, Steve Lawson at the at the Shepherds Conference. What was your reaction when you heard those 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 statements? I just laugh because <laughs> I, it's now seriously. Yes. Who in their right mind would want to follow John MacArthur? If 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 you'd want to follow John MacArthur at that church, that right. probably is a good indication you're not qualified to do it. Mm. Um, That's good because yeah. it's. It's going to take. It's wow. going to be a lot of cleanup. Um, yeah, absolutely, th that's yeah. a, it's a an enormous. Um, and churches aren't set up that way. I mean, look at look at the very few churches, big mega churches like we have now, continue past the celebrated preacher that they have. Yes, some of them do over the years. You mm -hmm. know, Moody Church. Many years. I mean, they, Times Square they, Church, Times Square yeah. Church. You know, you know. But I think their and foundation. They, 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 I, I they, they're not known for scandal, per se. Right. You, you see what I'm right. saying? So it's different. They have a. Let's, let's just see, they seem to have accountability in place. You know, we can talk doctrine all we want, but that's the funny mm -hmm. thing for me. It's like those that we want to attack or go after, whose doctrine may be you know non cessational or uh, 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 or or charismatic. They don't have as many scandals or or abuse or sex scandals in the in the in the in the church or I'll put it say per se abuse rather than than the ref, the reformed or the Calvinist or the non charismatic side. So it seems to me that we we want to focus over here and deal with critical race theory or deal with the LGBT or, or, or deal with you know woke theology and all of mm -hmm. that. But we have glaring in your face, you know, what are we going to do about this? But, but, but they're quiet. And if you say anything yeah. about it to them on Twitter, they either block you or they ignore you. Or they just act like you don't even exist. Well, and, 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 and look at it from a, you know, any other entity. 
have you heard have you heard even a whisper that that MacArthur is trying to groom whoever would success, succeed him that they're no. they're doing it no absolutely i mean there's 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 nothing like that happening no. No. they they um he doesn't see the ministry there beyond his life man I wanted I wanted to touch back on one thing. We didn't we didn't we didn't mm-hmm. touch on this point, and we were dealing with the Wasp report because there was something in their in their in their findings uh, that was very telling, and I believe it really, you know, it, it it hit the internet, and it basically described the the culture and atmosphere um, at the Master Seminary, uh, the the the, the uh, university, and did bottom line just mm-hmm. just Grace Community Church, but the Wasp report was focused on the school. And they said there was a culture of intimidation, of fear, bullying, and people in fear of losing their jobs. Yep. Uh, can you can you uh, elucidate on that a little bit? Well, sure. I mean, this was more at the college because they obviously had a lot more personnel. Um, but it, there was there was no room um, for disagreement. If if you disagreed with anything that. MacArthur said, regardless if it was part of the doctrinal statement, mm-hmm. um, you, you were gone in in a very short amount of time. It it it, it was um, uh, when I left. I, I tell you, sorry, Amy. About after I was gone, I had a um, a lady that worked for me in the library, and she was my circulation manager. So she was a supervisor. She was in charge of the student workers who were all seminary students who were all guys. And mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, when I was gone, they fired her for no particular reason wow. other than they were, you know, they didn't, they didn't want women in charge of anything. And I had always protected her mm-hmm. from that. Um, and uh, her father, who had supported the ministry and always was appreciative that I was, who lived, he lived in Ohio and was always appreciative that I, took care of his daughter and, and looked right. after her. Right. Um, he had money and, and he enlisted the services of an attorney and they sued the school and they won wow. for wrongful termination. They settled somehow, but it, it, it's because there was no reason to fire her. Yeah. There, there, there was, and you just never knew what, you know, someone might disappear the next day. Well, what happened? Mm. Well, yeah. Like me, I've been there for 25 years. I was, I was, I came in on a Monday after I just got back from a conference mm-hmm. and I, it was a holiday. It was a Monday holiday. And I went in the office just to check my mail and see what was there. And, um, I got, they, they either knew I was coming or found out that I was coming by there or whatever. And, uh, had me come over and told me I was done. With, no severance, no nothing. I mean, just well, I, yeah. I wasn't. I technically I wasn't fired. Uh huh. Um, they gave. I I got six months of severance, and uh, but told to clean out my office that week. Wow. And um, so that was. It, it was a. Yeah, I was fired, but I wasn't fired. You mm-hmm. know, I was. I was. Um. No longer needed for the mission of the school, so I was. Uh, uh, given severance and, and said, have a nice day. Mm. And, uh, and it was none of my, I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to communicate with my staff. So they had a meeting the next day and said, Oh, Dennis is not here anymore. Just like that. Just like that. And it was, um, wow. Uh, and, and that happened to other people too. Mm. Um, not the seminary, but at the, uh, at the college. Gotcha. I mean, the seminary was, were, wasn't a, not a very large school. I mean, there's not a very, a lot of people there. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, uh, well, and you know, Dick Mayhew, who was the Dean, you know, basically six months before me, he was, you know, shuffled into some other job and, and basically told that your career is over. Wow. And, uh, you know, with but not, but not Corey Welch's. 
Oh, that was, uh, there it was another, another kid that was there. His name was Rich Gregory. Mm-hmm. And, um, he's the one who sued, who's the one who got sued over the firing of my ex employee. And, um, he's, they showed him the door not long afterwards. The, the wasp report also mentioned about nepotism, which is why I, which is why I mentioned, you know, about, uh, John MacArthur's uh, son-in-law, Corey Welch. Um, oh, yeah. What what was his? I mean, I mean, was it that obvious that this was nepotism for him to be in these key positions? Oh, it was. I we were going to rebuild the front lobby of the seminary. The building was about ten years old by then, and we wanted to redo it. and And instead of having an inward uh, arc, have an outward arc and make it a little bit bigger and put some fancy things. And so I was. That was part of operation. So I was in charge of, of putting that together and and taking care of it. And But I was told that I had, you know, normally you go out and get bids and things like that. I was told I had to use the Welch group for the bulk of this work. You had to. For, you- I had, I couldn't get other, I couldn't get other bids for the electronics or the screens yeah. or any of the things you we were doing. I had to use the Welch group. So you couldn't, you can call three separate contracts. Nope. Like we always, none of that. Just to go. Nope. And, and I'm assuming that came direct from an order from MacArthur. Yep. Wow. Well, through, through someone through, to me. Of course. But, yeah, of course. And, um, and, and it was miserable experience. He, he was, they were always late getting specs to me. You know, the equipment, the first time they gave me specs, we bought the equipment they specified. Turned out it was the wrong equipment. And so we had to replace it, but he got paid. So I, I, it was, they, uh, yeah, a lot of things they didn't think through, but yeah, he was, he was the worst. Wow. He, and and that company or his company, whatever, whatever it was called. Yeah. Would you uh, would you consider John MacArthur to be a bully? Oh, absolutely. And why? And why is that? Um, when he doesn't get his way, he gets mad or gets even. There was a there was an event way back when. Um, I think the early 80s, they call it Black Monday. Mm-hmm. We basically mm-hmm. fired the entire pastoral staff. What? There, there was six or seven members of the pastoral staff, and and they had been there from the beginning with him, and and thought that that he had turned a corner. He was he was turning it into a a dictatorship and not a you know pastors working together to build a ministry, and they had complained. Called him in. They fired him. There's five or six of them that all got fired on the same day. Uh, I, I was thinking about another case um, or situation. Uh, this was dealing with the and I, and I did play the video of this one. Um, what was the guy's name? He was a, he was a police uh, assistant police chief, Robert um, Vernon. Bob Robert Vernon. Vernon. Bob Vernon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he was an elder. He was an elder for a while too. So, t- can you talk about that situation? Because there, there was a there was a situation that occurred at an abortion uh, uh, pro life um, march, and they were they were protesting in an abortion uh, at an abortion mm-hmm. center. Um, and, and in fact, I, I played the video of it. It was very disturbing. I didn't I didn't know that it was uh, John MacArthur that had gave supposedly allegedly gave counsel to to. Uh, Robert Vernon or Bob Vernon uh, regarding how, you know, Romans 13, if they're not, you know, submitting to authority, then, you know, you have the right to to remove them and you know, all this other kind of stuff. And people were, I mean, some people's arms were broken. Some people were actually uh, almost trampled on by horses. Uh, uh, people were, were, were right. visual, you know, visually assaulted. You saw it. Um, yeah. I don't know if you want to kind of speak to that or, or how did well, that have a stain on the church? I, I remember the, the, event because I was off the police department by then, obviously, but I was still, you know, interested. And, um, actually, uh, Bob Vernon's son-in-law, uh, married to his, his daughter, Pam, uh, he and I were in the same police academy class. Mm-hmm. Together. And, um, and, and Bob Vernon was a good guy. Mm-hmm. I, I, he was genuinely viewed 
on the department as as honest, uh, fair. Um, they people looked at him askance because he was outwardly much more religious than than people were used to. Um, he did not get along with Daryl Gates much. Mm. But, okay. uh, and and I I think he thought maybe someday he'd be the chief of police, but that was never going to happen. Um, but I, I don't know that I, I don't have personal knowledge that MacArthur counseled him how to handle a police situation. And if, if Bob listened to that, then yeah, I think think less of him then. Gotcha. I wanted to um, I wanted to play uh, a clip and get your thoughts about this. This is actually tying into what we're discussing about bullying and how the church should respond mm -hmm. and um, confront this issue. This is, uh, uh, I believe her name is Alyssa Childers. Let me know what you think about this and how true is her statement. You knew that there were biblical qualifications for leadership, but for some reason what we end up doing is we, we elevate talent or skills yes. over character. We mm -hmm. and why do we do this? I don't you know why dynamic do, preaching over yeah. you know. We we begin to you know, we, we disregard character as if it doesn't matter. We look at what is going on on a pulpit and we think about what's being said, which sometimes spiritually abusive situations, oftentimes what's being said is actually right or mm -hmm. close to right. right. Like Mark Driscoll, a lot of times would say things that, you know what, yeah. biblically, I could agree with you. Yeah. But we're, we're disregarding the behavior. Mm. We're, and But what I love about the biblical qualifications for leadership is it includes both. Yeah. It talks about sound doctrine and it talks about behavior. But we think... I don't know why we do this in the church. Why do we think that leaders deserve a longer rope? Mm -hmm. Like we should just justify all their sins. Mm -hmm. Because why? Because they have a their good, you know, rhetorical skills, or mm -hmm. they've got a huge platform. Why don't you get your thoughts about that, Dr. Swanson? You, how, how, well, how, how, how on point is that statement that she made? I think it's very important. I mean, because it, it, it's you see it time and time again. I mean, there are. There have been pastors, people that I respect greatly, who have been great on both sides. Uh, look at someone like Warren Wearsby, pastor mm -hmm. for years at Moody by uh, Moody Church, um, a, a, a great preacher. Used to teach preaching. Um, I could listen to him all day, and at the same time, a, a guy of sterling character, um, who's. Son went into ministry. He, you know, he, he was, he was, and there, and that kind of person can be replicated throughout. But, but she's right. You know, very often, it's the person who is loud and and and, and take baseball for instance. Yeah, Tommy Lasorda. Mm -hmm. No, no one would say that Tommy Lasorda <laughs> was. A great X's and O's baseball manager. It's not like he, he didn't, but he he didn't have to. He he was he had a persona. He was a he was loud and boisterous and and um, uh, he wasn't a pleasant individual to get along with. But he he was, but he got elevated. I mean, and his team won, so that that helped. I mean, had Grace Community Church not grown. Or if they ever had a, a significant decline, what would happen? Uh, who knows? Uh, yeah. Would would eventually would they have stopped putting up with him and shown him the door? I, right. I, I don't know. Circumstances, um, like I said, you know, success breeds success sometimes. But and it was just, but well, for instance, I mean, when you you if you started going there in like the eighties. He started preaching through the Gospel of Matthew mm -hmm. for 13 years. <laughs> wow. And and um, wow. so, I mean, you could you could be born, mm -hmm. grow up almost in high school, and yeah. the only sermons you ever heard were the Gospel of Matthew. Yeah. Is that the proper way of uh, the, the proper methodology to build a church? And, right. and and I, I man, to, to me, you know the verse by verse preaching, and I and I believe in it. But you know when that used to be done mm. on Wednesdays, wow, or, or Sunday school, you never did it on Sunday in the in the 
morning service. Um, Vernon McGee with at yeah. Church of the Door, he did all of the verse by verse stuff. That was all on Wednesday. Wow. And I, if you listen to and and Vernon McGee, you listen to Vernon McGee preach a, a sermon when he was in his prime at Church of the Open Door. Mm-hmm. He could preach, mm. and it was a. And when MacArthur got into that, the, the verse by verse stuff, it was, it was new, it was unique, it was different, mm-hmm. caught on. Um, I, I think it has a place. But not for thirteen years, right? Yeah, or or, or eight <laughs> years through right. Romans, yeah, or, or yeah. things like that. And that's you know, it's, it's like, overkill. You know, it's overkill. All, all things in moderation, as the old saying it's, goes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because you so know what they, I think about also though too, Doctor Swanson. I think you know, for me, when I was when I was pastor, and I, and I actually went through the Book of Matthew, right? And mm-hmm. my wife and, and my wife and they can tell you this. Um, I said, if there's an issue as we're going through a book or whatever that I need to address. We're going to get off of this book and, you know, we're going to get off the Bible bus and address this. I, I believe that, that biblical pastoring or shepherding, you meet the needs of the people. You don't get so, so tied in and so laser focused just to say, okay, we're going to go to the book of Matthew, but wait a minute, you got all this stuff going on in the world and your people need answers to know how to respond to these things. But if you're just focusing on just, just preaching through one particular book, and I've heard people say, well, you know, by, by, if, we, if, we go through, if we go verse by verse through, through a book, we'll, we'll get to it. Well, for how long? Because now <laughs> if you've got, you got a family that's needing counseling, or I've got, a, I've got a situation in your church, and for me, when I read the epistles, when I read Paul's letters, and he says, now concerning the things which you wrote unto me, those were issues that they were needing answers to. And of course, they had to wait for, for months mm-hmm. to probably get an answer back from, from the Apostle Paul, right? Sure. So, so I think sometimes we can become so, matter of fact, I know we can. We try to mimic and, 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 and copycat our favorite preacher. And while they may be doing that, we don't know what that those congregants are, are going through. You know, I, I just believe that if we're submitted to the spirit of God and, 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 and that the proverb says, know well the condition of your flock and of your herds, then that means you need to be involved. That means you need to be making sure you're taking the pulse of your people and not just focusing on one particular book, because that one particular book may not address that issue that your that your that your congregation is dealing with. Right. Didn't mean to rant, but that was my that's my point. <laughs> no, I, 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 no, and I agree with that entirely. It's, yeah. Um, it's it's like I said, all things in moderation, create balance and understand your the the the, the preaching is important. It um, is it the high point of the service. I I'm not as committed to that part of it anymore. I think the high point is the people coming together and worshiping, mm. um, the prayer and the singing and, and different things like that. But, and, and, and the preaching is important. There's no question. Right. About it should be that. all collective. But, it should be a collective. It should it be should, the whole, the whole, the whole. Yes, absolutely. But you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be, you, you shouldn't have to wait years to get to the next book of the Bible. Oh my gosh. I, I, I would probably, yeah, I, I would I'd probably pull my follicles out. Cause I don't have any more hair. It just be pulling my follicles yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's get to the next part here. So th- in this in this section here, uh, uh, Dr. Swanson, I want to play these clips. I'm not sure if you've seen them before, but uh, I'm going to get your reaction to it. This is um, an interview that uh, Brother Timothy Jones had with Tim Hurd, Bible the Big Wing Nut. And they had a brief conversation. And uh, the subject of, uh, of Elder Han Cho uh, came up. So I'm going to play these clips. There's going to be two clips. And then we'll uh, I'll have your thoughts okay. on, on, on the other side. Well, can you clarify for me the fullness of Han Cho? In regards to John, John MacArthur, what is your answer to Han Cho being being basically coming back to John MacArthur and saying everything that we that we investigated is absolutely true? You guys missed some things. You guys need to repent. And MacArthur saying, "Ah, forget about it." And basically, the the elders coming around and telling this man that he needs to retract his findings or resign. What what, what happens with that? And and I would and and like I said, I'm not trying to come at you. I really want to learn this. I really want to know because it, I got a lot of people in my audience that want to know too. Well, you have to be careful with what you said because what you just said is false. What you said isn't what Han Cho said and it's not what John MacArthur said. And 
what everyone needs to realize is that we don't know all that was said. One thing I know is that the elder board did not commission Han Cho to do an investigation. That's false information that, that you have stated. That's false information that others are stating as well. Um, it was a request that was, uh, I'm, I'm sharing screen, aren't I? It was personally and informally a request was made. Personally and informally. Hey. The elders never commissioned him to do an investigation. This is work done by David Morrill. So I want to get your thoughts first. I'll let you chime in, uh, Dr. Swanson, your, your take on what Tim Hurd said regarding uh, uh, former Elder Hancho. It's not true. It, it, it's He's nuancing the, the words in a way that makes it um, to his benefit, but it, it's not true. He was assigned. He was asked. Um, he wasn't the only one. There was four of them, I think, originally on the group that was studying all of this. And um, he did go to, I mean, I, I know where, I know where Tim is getting it from. He's getting it from Phil Johnson. Of course he is. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and um, it, it, it's, it's just absurd. The, uh, the idea that Han show would run off as a renegade doing renegade, doing this all on his own with no, you know, authority behind from the elder board behind him is just patently absurd to anyone who knows him. Um, you, you couldn't find a more loyal um, uh, elder, uh, solid guy than Han Cho if, if you went on a worldwide search. Mm. And um, the way he was treated was shameful. Um, but that's, again, I mean, look at what happened. I mean, did John MacArthur, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, we need to fix this. No, he never admits that he's wrong about anything. And and so I, I no, I think Tim is entirely, you know, as we used to say, sucking it out of his thumb. Yeah. Uh Shonda said on the on the screen, I'm not sure if you can see her comment, she says, So it was four, not just Elder Cho? It was there was four of them all together. It was him and three others that mm. would I, I don't know who the other three were. Gotcha. But, I mean, that was in the um that was in the CT article. CT article. Yeah. Um, so it, now here's something. I don't know if you noticed it. I don't know if you noticed what he had said, though, uh, Dr. Swanson. He said that he told Tim Jones that Tim is an error because we don't know. But then here he says the next breath. But here's what I know. I know that he didn't. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So so it's like, dude, yeah. how, how do, you, you, you don't even know what you're talking about. But see, again, they, they make these it, statements. And he has no proof other than, like you said, he's being fed information from Phil Johnson. Um, but Phil Johnson doesn't want, to go, doesn't want to go on record making a statement. But yet no, he is making a statement behind the scenes. Yeah. And, and it's to somebody who doesn't go to that church, who never went to that church, to my knowledge. Um, is he even in the same state? I have no idea. But it, and and is removed from the situation, never met, you know, um, the family, never met David, never met any of these people. And uh, Eileen Gray, David Gray, doesn't, wouldn't know them if they, if he tripped over them, but he's somehow now the renowned expert on the timeline and everything that happened, which right. is just silly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so here's the next clip. Um, going they're still talking about uh elder han cho we'll come on the other side so the the uh christianity today article claims that a lawyer and one of four officers on the elder board at grace community church chow was asked to study the case chow's office uh was as recording secretary readers of the uh, julie roy's article would readers would be forgiven for concluding that he was chosen for, excuse me, chosen by the elders to, to commission a fresh investigation because of some 
special legal expertise, a conclusion supported by his friend Rachel Don, Don Holler, whatever her name is. In reality, Cho uh, was asked personally and informally to summarize the available court documents from the David Gray criminal case um, that was alluded to by Phil Johnson back in March of 2022. No Cho-led investigation into the church's involvement with the Grays was ever requested by the elders. So that's important to note because that's that's one of your talking points and it, and it's false. Okay. All right. So so where okay, so with David Morrow, I mean, I'm sorry, dude. Um I mean, I'm not saying that David Morrow was wrong, but after everything that Pulpit and Penn have like really done over all the years and the bad rap that they've gotten, um I consider I consider Protestia and David Morrow like the CNN of Christian news, boss. I'm not trying to down anyone. Like I said, it's not an insult. But at the same time, you guys say, well, that didn't happen. But here, Julie Roy's report's different. So it's basically he said, she said at this point. So I'll give you what Julie Roy said. Julie said, Cho told CT that after TER's initial story published, GCC elders tapped him to review the decades-old case. When he did, he became convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that David Gray was guilty and GCC had committed terrible injustice. In a 20-page document submitted to the GCC board, Cho reportedly wrote, now that the facts are indeed known, it's not too late to do justice, even at this stage, almost 20 years later. One's own integrity in upholding justice and righteousness and being faithful, even in the small things, even for something 20 years ago, all matters immensely. But here's the reason why I'm thinking I'm going to go in the direction of what Julie Rose reported. Because Christianity Today picked up the story from Han Cho, and Han Cho officially resigned after stating that when he came back with the facts, he was told by MacArthur and company that he needed to retract his findings or resign. So he says that he, this is what Han Cho says. Han Cho said, I was asked by the elder board. You see what I'm saying? So, so you have David Morrow who's going to third party information to rebuttal something that Han Cho himself. So I'm coming directly from the source of Han Cho and David Morrow's coming from other third party and you know uh, third party sources. So I don't like I said. This is what you know. Protestia. This is what your buddies at Protestia have done for a long time. And out of all the hit pieces and all the lies that they've been exposed for, dude. Especially with JD. Like I said, I'm not trying to kick them down. JD Hall, good friend of you guys. Okay, I get it. Addiction sucks. I have compassion. I have a heart for that. But the thing is, dude, is that. I'm just saying, I'm not saying David Morrow's wrong. I, I, I'm just stating that when it comes down to everything, who, where do we really want to stand? Because, I mean, David Morrow and they've already kind of proven themselves to be dishonest. Doesn't mean that they're not being honest in this. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I'm not trying to down you guys, but I'm just saying, man, like when it comes down, overall, it's for the audience to choose, but the results. The results of Han Cho going to CT, going to Christianity Today, and him saying this himself. You know what I'm saying? So, because because this is what Han Cho said, and Han Cho officially resigned as an elder on that board. Now, interesting, they said on there on on uh, Tim Hurd's reading the article from Protesta. He said, unbeknownst to the rest of the elders, that Han Cho conducted this investigation uh, without permission. I mean, it it, it is just it. It would anger you uh, if you did not know how much of a joke and how you, and, and how much, matter of fact, even Phil Johnson called um, J.D. Hall's journalism, quote unquote, yellow journalism. He oh, called sure. it that. And so uh, wh what are your thoughts about about what you've heard in his in, in, in uh, Tim Hurd's so-called defense? Well, it, it, Tim, Tim is engaged in the ultimate wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. He would like, he would like it. He would like MacArthur to be completely innocent in this regard. I mean, this is a, this is a scandal. I mean, this is, um, th this is, I mean, at a certain level in, in a, if it wasn't related to a church, this would be actionable. Mm. Uh, 
and and I believe I believe Han Cho over um, anyone else. And and notice there's there's you don't have John MacArthur, you don't have the board chair. And and interesting when you read the CT article, this is typical what MacArthur does. He never does things himself. He always he went to the board chairman and said you need to get Han you know, under control or get rid of him. Wow. He doesn't, he doesn't deal with things like that. himself. he never does anything like that himself. Right. And, uh, uh, and I, that's exactly how I would have thought it went down. And that's the way it did go down. I, I, the idea that, like, again, I say the idea that Han show would go off and, and do this and create a 20 page report is silly. I mean, Yes, he's an attorney, and it helped him. It, it, it helped that experience to plow through some of the legal documents. But he, he's an entertainment attorney. He's not a criminal attorney. So, I mean, he could read the documents and the court reports and, and be able to pull out what he needed. Um, but it's not like he had expertise in criminality. Uh, that's not his. That's not his field of law. Yeah. But, um, and and. And what Tim ends up having to do, he has to, he has to, without saying it, he has to say that Han Cho is an out and out liar and everything he wrote and said in CT article is a lie and everything he, you know, that none of it happened, you know, yeah. and, and I, that is. That's an insult. That's it's an, an insult. insult. And it's just, it, I, I know it, it's just impossible to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next clip, of course, they're still talking about um, Han Cho, and uh, I believe Tim is going to respond now to what uh, Tim Jones sure. said. So we'll come back on the other side as well, too. And you have an elder, Phil Johnson, saying no. He's saying he's saying that Ho Han Cho is not telling the truth. Phil okay. Johnson. That's who's quoted. That that's what I read. Phil Johnson said, uh -huh. "No, he wasn't commissioned by it." And okay. your, please don't mute me, okay? All right, sorry. Right. Your right. your your charge of you know, I I don't know if David's lying or telling the truth here or not, but and then you go on and on and on, and all you're doing is poisoning the well. You're poisoning the well. It's a philosophical term. Uh, it, it, you, what you're doing to your audience is saying, "Look at all this false stuff over here," which you're not being specific, and we don't, we don't want to, we don't have to. I mean, the the uh, JD Hall situation breaks my heart, and I, I, it breaks my heart every day. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, so what you have here is you've got Cho, Cho's testimony, and what David is sharing is Johnson's testimony. Okay. See, see, so my dear you've got him. you've got two elders. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm gonna, gonna, you're going to believe one and not the other. Well, hold on. But a minute. we're third just, party. Just so we're, we're fourth party, right? Oh, so on, we don't know. Do yeah, we yeah, actually yeah. know? Do we actually know? Is it Phil or is it Cho? Do we actually know? If you have two individuals on two sides, right? You have David Morrow and a company who have proven themselves to be false. You have you. We have you. Who have admitted personally to to Jeff Durbin that you intentionally lied and use your platform to do it? What I'm say, stating to my audience is not poisoning the well. What I'm stating to my audience is consider the sources. That's what I'm saying. So if, if Han Cho officially resigned, if Han Cho resigned and left the church, stating this is why I left because I called them to do justice and they wouldn't do it. Then I'm going to listen to what he says because the evidence, the the circumstantial evidence pops up with him overall when you have Phil Johnson who, dude, Phil Johnson has lied for MacArthur for years, dude. Dude, MacArthur said he was there at Martin Luther King's death, bruh. And, and, and Phil Johnson said, uh, uh, well, you know, uh, MacArthur just doesn't remember things right. That was his, MacArthur's, uh, let me say something. I, Phil Johnson is a yes man for MacArthur. Everybody knows that. But my thing, and I'm, and, and, I'll, and I'll let you speak in a second. My thing is the situation of where you're considering and you're weighing the sources for information, 
And Protesti is not a good source for information, and neither are you due to your own admission. Okay. Uh, if you're going to keep going back to 2017, right? You're going to go back to 2017 when I admitted my guilt. And when I make points, you're going to go back to 2017 and say, say, Tim, look at, look at, you lied and you were, you were not trustworthy and you admitted it. You admitted it, Tim. You were wrong and you admitted it. So why should I listen to you right now? We, we need to bury that quick or everything that we're doing here is, is for not. Because here, let me give you an example. And so I, I, I want to get your thoughts about this. And then I have, I have some receipts to pretty much disprove what Tim Hurd is trying to defend. But I wanted to get your thoughts about, about, <laughs> about this again. Well, I mean, it, he, he's right in the sense that, that Phil is, um, runs cover for MacArthur. Yes. Um, it, it, I, I think truth be known that the, the biography of MacArthur was largely written by Phil. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, and to try, you know, to try to say, well, I, I, yes, I made a mistake in the past and you're trying to bring that up again. It's because he's, he, he's dug a hole for himself. He's, mm -hmm. he's relying on information from Phil Johnson who I wouldn't, if, if Phil said the sun was up and it was shining, I would go outside to check. Amen. <laughs> but, uh, I, I just, um, uh, I, I have no, no use for him. I, I don't think he is reliable, um, at, at any level, yeah. but he's one of the insiders, which is one of the, I, I tell you, this is one of the issues I have with the organization at mm. Grace Church because it, it moved from when MacArthur came there, it was a congregationally run church. I mean, the congregation voted to call him as the pastor. Mm. And then they introduced elders and the congregation used to you know, vote on the elders. It's not that way anymore. The elders point, the self-perpetuating elder board, the elders select the elders and they have, you know, an executive committee of elders within the elder board itself. And, and some things that they do are, are not readily known to the other elders. Yeah. 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 And I think that's just a, a terrible way of running a church. But I no to, matter how big the church is. Yeah. I wanted to play this. I'm um, not, not play, but I want to share with you the, the, the screenshots because now mm -hmm. interestingly, uh, remember, you know, Tim is basically Tim Hurd. That is, is 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 saying that um, that Han Cho is lying. That that he yes. he was he was you know he he just did this by rogue, uh, and he was not you know uh, requested to do this. And so, well, mm -hmm. I, I believe I believe you know receipts uh, you know tell the truth. Re you know receipts don't lie, but people do. And right. so, I want to just populate these. And you should be able to see them on the screen. This is uh this is uh your your buddy Fred Butler. You know who he is right. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> so someone said here, uh, this is what Fred Butler thinks of Han Cho. That's some strong language. This is uh, February of, uh, of this year. He says he is, he is talking about now Han Cho. Uh, he is slandering the brethren in high handed sin, colluding with people who hate our church. He's owed no respect. That's one tweet there. He says, right. Then you have another tweet. Joseph Lavelle. He, he responds to, uh, Fred Butler. Uh, he says, hi, Fred. I'm the author of this post. Been searching through scripture for biblical justification for actions like this. As an elder, if Cho was in sin, then they had a requirement to rebuke him in the sight of all. Can you share your biblical understanding of just erasing him? And Fred responds and says, there is no biblical principle or command that obligates a church to host the sermons of anyone, let alone someone who has left the congregation months ago and is now hostile to the former church. He responds to uh, Fred again. He says, oh, very interesting. Very interesting perspe perspectives in your responses. He said, I hope it's okay if I respond to each. He says, number one, I believe it was Cho who was tasked with investigating by the elders. He was trusted that much to be their representative in the matter. And if he didn't know the facts and the other elders did 
then he was under obligation or task from the elders to garnish them before he gave his report or findings. However, from what we know, they did not say he was derelict in his investigation, but disagreed with his recommendations. Right. And so Fred responds back and says again, he wasn't tasked by the elders. He could have asked the very men who were a part of this case 22 years ago, 22 years ago now, but he didn't. Joseph responds and says, interesting, because that's not what Phil Johnson posted on Twitter before he was locked out. And here's the here's the here's the here's the smoking gun. Mm -hmm. It was shared on Twitter, but not posted here specifically by Phil. And this is from expository parent, uh, parenting. It says, quote, many of you have have questions concerning the Julie Roy story released this week concerning John MacArthur. As we abide by Proverbs 18, 17, I reached out to Phil Johnson. He and he provided the following comment. So, 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 Doctor Swanson, can I just ask this question? If if this writing says he provided the following comments, would this be a statement? Sure. I mean, yeah, it's that's you're saying Phil Johnson said the following. Okay. So he says, note, <laughs> this is not any form of official statement from GCC, but 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 Phil is still giving a statement. You know, comment, right. right? And here's the quotes. It's in quotations. Now it's in quotations. I haven't even had a chance to read Miss Roy's column yet. She deliberately po uh, posted it to coincide with the start of the Shepherds Conference, which isn't completely over until after church tomorrow. She is writing about a 20 year old discipline case that I had no involvement in. It didn't pertain. It doesn't pertain to me in any way, though she always attaches my name to pretty much everything she does. A friend of mine who was both an elder and an attorney with a special interest in defending real victims. Oh, no, I'm not going to go there. Real victims is investigating the case. I don't know whether the church will make a statement and if so, when. But I'm disinclined to think all the noise about it represents a legitimate desire to know the truth because all of the screeching tweets from the survivor, quote unquote, community calling for a halt. To Shepherd's Conference, while someone gives a speedy answer to a piece written by a career muckraker who has proven to be inaccurate and misinformed in the past. If they want GCC to respond, they need to give more objective people an opportunity to investigate the case. Now, this is Phil Johnson's quote. This is it. Suppose this is what he mm -hmm. said, right? Well, there's some highlighted portion there, Dr. Swanson. It says, a friend of his, a friend of Phil Johnson's, who's both an elder and an attorney. Yeah. Now, I'm just looking at based on process of, of, of elimination, sir. Uh, let's just say so if there, if there was four reported to, to investigate this case. OK. One of them now uh, resigns. He's an elder. CT gets his story. He tells what happens. It seems to me based on logical deduction and reasoning yeah. that this former this this friend and elder who was an attorney was Han Cho. Sure was. Okay. Who Han, Han one of the most loyal um, elders that they that they ever had. Yes. And, uh, um, that's that's crazy. I mean, so 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 Tim Tim Hurd again once again doesn't know what in the world he's talking about. But he, but the the uh, the tweet conversation continues on. It says, <laughs> Fred says uh, that was Phil asking him personally, apart from the elders. Not the elder board asking him. He asked them to look at the links Roy's had on the court documents, and he came back with his report nobody asked for, and everyone who actually knows the case said was wildly inaccurate. <sighs> Joseph responds and says, Now see, that makes even that makes it even worse. For one, Phil isn't no one asked for. He's the executive director of G of GTY, editor of many of MacArthur's books, and someone MacArthur explicitly trusts. He was the public face of the elders after the original Roy's article and assured people that an investigation was going to happen inter internally. That actually made bunch, a bunch of critics angry that an investigation wouldn't be done by a third party. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, he continues on. So either Phil asked him to do this investigation for the elders or the elders has no has zero intention of doing any investigating which could be far more derelict of their oversight responsibilities than simply disagreeing with the said report. Yep. Either way, he says, 
Sounds like trying to have cake and eat it too. Was an investigation done? No one asked for one? Then why did Phil say one was being conducted? This is getting worse in my mind, he says. By the way, he says, it's important to note, I'm not anti-grace. I'm a graduate of the MABC program. And then, of course, Fred, he responds, what's getting worse? His investigation was reading court documents, not looking at the original counseling case, which he didn't bother to look at. And it is utterly unrelated to the court case two to three years later. Now, I'm just going to ask the obvious question, Dr. Uh, Swanson. Uh, is Fred Butler uh, an elder at Grace Community Church? What does this what does this man have to do with any of this? Where is he getting this intel information from, sir? He gets it from Phil. He's he's Phil's, you know, he's. Um, uh, um, I was going to say something, but I was a tag dog. But, if, I'll see he, he, well, not even that. He, he's kind of like, you know, the. He he would be like the Peter Laurie character in a oh, my. horror movie. I mean that's 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 Freddie. He he has no all the years that he's been there, he's never gotten any leadership position because he's unqualified. Mm. Um, it, it, he he takes care of things and is Phil's lackey, and that's the, the there it end, is. That's the end of his ability. Gotcha. Um, a useful idiot. Idea, yeah, the the idea that he, you know, he doesn't know anything independently of what Phil tells him. Yeah, that's right. He is a mailroom. He he he's the mail guy, wasn't he? Didn't he work in the mailroom at Grace? He in the mail room and I think he works. I think he's still whatever he does at Grace. To yeah. you is now it's out and it's not there anymore. It's way okay. out in Santa Clarita. But yeah. um, it, it, but he's not a lawyer. He's not an attorney by any no, stretch of imagination. He's, oh gosh, no. <laughs> okay. I, I don't even think he's a college graduate. Okay. Um, I, it, it's to to Fred. Fred just attacks, and you know he'll just make things worse. Mm -hmm. they, they, should keep him from, they should keep him from talking, but they don't. Yeah. Um, here's going to be something that's interesting. Here, um, <laughs> you know, they said confession is good for the soul. I guess it depends on what soul is uh, being good for. <laughs> I'm gonna let you listen to this one. <laughs> I don't worship John MacArthur. All right. And you, you've been transparent. I'll, I'll be completely transparent. Okay. I have, I have 108,000 subscribers, right? And it's not because of me. I, I am not, I am not a witty guy. I, I don't, I'm not a, a quick thinker. People don't tune in to see, you know, what is Tim going to say today? They tune in to what's the latest news on John MacArthur. Uh, I've had a YouTube channel since 2012 and about five years ago, I was like, how can I get, how can I get more subscribers? I mean, I have 8,000 subscribers, but it took me, you know, eight years to do that. I mean, and I was reading stuff on YouTube about how to grow your YouTube channel. It was like, just look at the videos that most people that get your most views, well, whatever you're saying there, that's what your audience wants to hear. Well, I, I did a search and it's like, every time I talk about John MacArthur, I get lots of views. And I believe that John MacArthur, the people who war against John MacArthur, see the same thing. Um, and they're like, hey, when I talk negative about John MacArthur, I get more views. So, you know what? I'm going to talk negative about John MacArthur more. I'm, uh, so it's on both sides. You know, John MacArthur's not going to be around uh, forever. So I need to then come up with something else to talk about. <laughs> uh, and also... I, I, you know, I, I do share other videos that sometimes get a lot of views, but with, with the hundred thousand subscribers, there's the, uh, the plaque. I never made a video about it because I know it's not about me and I display it yeah. sideways because it's, it's kind of awkward that I have it because yeah, again, yeah. it's, it's really, it's really not about, about me. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the best way you say it. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Your thoughts, that's sir? Like after the, well, that, that would be like, you know, that would be like, you know, Mickey Mantle and Whitey Ford saying after the 19, <laughs> you know, 60 World Series that it wasn't about them or mm. the 56 World Series. It wasn't about them. You know, well, of course it was. It was all about them. It, it, it's, 
it's false modesty, disingenuous. Yeah. So, I mean, why? If if that was the case, why would he ever even look at the numbers of how many people he has? Right. I mean, it, it, it just it would just be it would never occur to you. You just you go in and you do your you know you if this is your job or your ministry you go in and you do it and then um, you, uh, you you quit for the day yeah and you get people that you know give you feedback and you go from there. Mm-hmm. The idea that you look at how many people you have responding, who cares? Now. This is going to be the next three clips, sir, is going to be very interesting. Uh, I know how you feel about justice. I know how you feel about, uh, you know, uh, racial issues and things of that nature. We've had conversations. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, you may want to get you a stronger drink after these clips (laughs) because uh, your 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 (laughs) your former uh, uh, member, um, he went on record making a statement regarding black people. And white people, um, I, I believe is racist. Um, I actually had Tim Hurd on my channel two years ago, I believe it was in 2021. I think it was March the sixth or whatever like that. Um, Tim, uh, Tim, uh, Tim Hurd and and Fred Butler, they used to be partners on the Bible Thumping Wingnuts uh, podcast, and supposedly Fred Butler had wrote a blog, and for some reason. Uh, Dr. Swanson, I'm going to populate the the link, and and those of you who are in the chat, you can tell me if you find it, because I believe it's just, it's it's gone like Hillary's emails or like Waldo. You right. may have a hard time finding it, but there's a blog title. Who who would have thought uh, reading the reformers would be racist? And he made some some very white supremacist and racist statements, and so I challenged Tim Tim Hurd uh, a re- re- about it and asked him to denounce it and take it down. And so he basically tried to make excuses for the, uh, for the comments. So let me just go ahead and just play these three okay. clips and uh, we'll come back on the other side. But let me just go ahead and just pull up the post from Fred Butler, who is a part of Bible Thumping Wingnut, ladies and gentlemen. What part is Fred Butler of Bible Thumping Wingnut? He wrote an article uh, on your <laughs> site. Oh, you, you remember this? That's on my website? Yeah, look it up. Who knew that? Who knew that? I think coordinated reformers white, would be racist. It's called, it's called white, white and black theology. No, it's, I think it's called whoever, whoever thought uh, quoting the reformers would be considered racist, something to that effect. But it's on, it's under, it's under your website, under Bible thumping wingnut. And you have and, a problem and, with it. I'm sorry. And you have a problem with it. You say, do I have a problem with it? No, I'm c- affirming you have a problem with it. Anybody that has discernment, like you said, would have a problem with the statement that's being that's being posted under your website. Quote. Now, folks are going to respond by saying that learning from Christians of an African heritage is far different from learning uh, from the participants in the Radical Reformation. Moreover, learning specifically from African-American theologians is certainly not the same. OK, Can you put the link sure. in the description? I'd agree. But let's face the hard truth. This is Fred Butler's. Can somebody put the link to that? so that we can find it on the internet. And, uh, and as they do that, let me finish reading the rest of this uh, article. Fred Butler says on your website, quote, okay, sure, I'd agree, but let's face the hard truth. The white European Western society Christians are truly the ones who not only preserve Christian orthodoxy for, for everyone, including recapturing the Bible in the original languages. They are the ones who shape the course of Protestant Christianity throughout the world and specifically here in the United States. I don't mean to be dismissive of their contribution, but African-American Christians are a small portion built upon the main foundation that just so happens to be, according to God's providence, a white Western European English one. A seminary with three or four year track designed to train men as expositional preachers must stay focused on the foundational matters and that regrettably edit subjects others may believe are important. There is nothing racist about that. I will beg the difference. I'm pretty sure those who read this and just heard this would take this to come off and to be interpreted as white supremacists. I don't mean to be dismissive of their contribution. What is their contribution? Talking about those who are black folk, black people. But African-American Christians are a small portion built upon the main foundation that just so happens to be, according to God's providence, a white Western European English. This is this is on your website, Tim. You got the link to that? 
I, I'll go ahead and find it and post it up here for you. There's a link right there. Yeah, I would encourage everybody to go read that so they can find out what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, do you support that statement? It's on your website. I have to read. Re, I'd have to read the article. I don't. I you, you, you don't. You don't. I so you don't read a long time ago. Say again. So my question is: Do you support that statement, or do you renounce it? It's in paragraph four of what CT uh, German said. Um, paragraph uh, four. I'm unfamiliar with the. I'm unfamiliar with the article. I'm unfamiliar with Fred's uh, Fred's uh, argument. And would you like me to take that off my website? If you would, I will take it down right now. Until no, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just I'm just asking you until, since, I, until I do until I do further research. Would you like me to take it down? No, I, I want you. I want you to. I'm a, I'm asking you based. I'm asking you. I'm asking you based on that statement. That statement is a white supremacist statement. It's on your website. Your website. You said that you you run Bible thumping wingnut. Fred Butler basically now is under you, right? No. He, no. So what is your what is your relationship? What is your what is your relationship to, with, Fred, with Fred Butler? Uh, we were good friends. We're acqu good acquaintances now. We haven't talked in a long time. He hasn't written for Bible thumping wingnut in a long time, but he has written a lot for Bible thumping wingnut. Mm -hmm. But this statement that he wrote right here, what is your response to that? Fourth paragraph. Uh huh. What proof does he offer demonstrating his charge of secret racism? He begins by expressing his gratitude to John at TMS. I don't even know what he's talking about. Uh, well, what we do know is what he said in that paragraph in that article. That's under your website, under your domain. That's your website. Yeah. Yeah. So you should have control over what's being on, what's being posted on your website, right? Are you, are you offended by it? Should I take it down? <laughs> Dr. Swanson. Well, he has the same problem that others have. He can't admit that he's wrong. And the, the statement is, one, patently offensive to any thinking church historian. Mm. Um, he, um, the, 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 Western white Europeans did not recover the original languages. I mean, remember that the, the Greek Orthodox Church never stopped using Greek. Mm. You know, the, the, the Latin church, the, the Roman church used Latin, of course, but the, it's just absurd. The idea that, that, that the blacks have, you know, a, a little. insignificant <laughs> or a little, you know, impact it's it's just uh, absurd. I mean, how many of and, and how many of some of the early church fathers like Augustine, yeah, Tertullian, and others, you know, <laughs> who, who were not Caucasian? Athanasius, yes, 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 and um, Athanasius especially. But you know, well, and, and and I mean, you can get going with. I mean, mm -hmm. Christ wasn't Caucasian, right? I mean. It gets right down to it. I mean, it, and there are a lot of um, these white supremacist neo-Nazi groups out there on Twitter right now that are just yes, know, yes, they say the most offensively absurd things, all in the name of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This yeah. uh, Corey Mahler, who just got um, excommunicated from the Lutheran Church, I think yesterday, and uh, and he's one of the biggest, you know you know, offenders in, in that regard. So it, it's, uh, uh, and, and, and it's, I mean, Corey Mahler could have easily written exactly the same thing that, that Freddie wrote there. Right. Now are you not saying Corey minor, ladies and gentlemen, he's saying Corey Mahler, not, not, not Corey Mahler. minor in case, in case they're yeah. trying to <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> yeah. <laughs> work on my pronunciation. Better. No problem. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. It's, but, but one, Freddie has no qualifications or, or has ever exhibited any, you know, sufficient background with with sources and materials to write something about Christian history in that in that vein. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, and and Tim couldn't bring himself to say anything bad about it, right? Because because then he's admitting that he's got something like that on his web page. And he said, oh, I'll take it down. I'll take it down. And no, just, you know, 
make Espan- a statement. Espanol said that's right. Yeah, say this is bad. You know, that's say right. say that you made a mistake. You know, now, it, you, now, you, now you know. Interestingly, too, Dr. Swanson, you know, Phil Johnson. I also raked him over the coals uh, earlier this year because he endorses Ariel Dabney. He said that Ariel oh, Dabney. Gosh. Yeah, he said Ariel Dabney is one of his favorite theologians. I didn't mm-hmm. want to play the clip because I played it so many times, but um, um, it is in the video that I had uh, this clip uh, excerpted from um, called uh, White Supremacy and Bible, and Bible Thumping Weenuts. And so I played that video uh, back and I asked uh, Tim to respond to it. Tim, of course, was caping and covering and defending Phil Johnson and right. said, well, oh, he knew he, he's denouncing the racist. I said, no, he didn't. He said, this man is, his fa- is one of his favorite theologians. I said, how would you I said, how would you all feel if I said that Louis Farrakhan or James Cone or Jeremiah Wright were, was one of my favorite theologians? All hell would break loose. And you know it. They gave they gave Tabidi and Yabwile a hard time for just him endorsing certain people. Uh, and they question his his uh, walk with the Lord. And now I'm saying now you got people like Phil Johnson, John MacArthur. They, they, they laud and praise a racist who hated black people and claim that this man was a Christian. And I'm saying to myself, how? How can you how can you espouse this man's writings and teachings when he makes it clear that black people were less than human? R.L. Dabney. And Phil Johnson mm-hmm. is on record saying that he is one of his favorite theologians and said that the reason why he um, he said that, that the, the reason why he feels bad that he could have you know been been probably the greatest theologian was because of his racist views. But he was a product of his time. Fooey. That's what he said. If, 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 if he was a product of his times, then then why was there a civil war? Mm because all the people in the North were products of their time. You know, it, it's a, um, uh, it's, it's silly. And, and Dabney, Dabney was a, well, oh yeah. Uh, and, and, and Nathan Bedford Forrest, who, who yes. was the ultimate in racists. Um, it, but he, he was converted. He, he, he ended up getting converted yeah. and, got, and got saved. And like you say, he was the yeah. same, born in the same era and generation that Ariel Dabney was. Got yeah. saved by the gospel yeah. and turned his life around. Yeah, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, frankly, use Dabney for anything because of that. Because it, it takes, you know, when you believe a an enormous that that people that that um, to use a, a theological definition that tripartite yes people yes are that somehow this group of them is inferior right and. Because of you know their their skin color or whatever, right, it right, is there is nothing you're going to um, uh, be able to trust after that because it affects every part of your theology. Absolutely, 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 and and, and interestingly, interestingly too, though, Doctor Swanson, um, they also gave people a hard time when uh, when uh, John Piper had uh, had also was a, was was participating in the MLK fifty. Uh, celebration a few years back. I mean, Phil Johnson and all of them. They was giving. They was giving people a hard oh, time uh, about that. So, so MLK was a product of his time. His theology was was jacked. He 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 was a uh, he didn't he de- he denied the resurrection of Christ and things of that nature. So he's not a Christian. But but Ariel Dabney, he he's okay. Yeah, and how and how many you know? Well, at, 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 but look at the church. How many Grace Community Church? What's their? How many elders are? Um, non-Caucasian. Please talk about that story. Let, let's go to that story that you mentioned about. <laughs> I think this was about the WASP report about them not having diversity in yeah. their. Uh, could you can you cut? Can you touch on that? What, what MacArthur said well, in, in that meeting? <laughs> oh yeah, we, I was in a I was in a WASP meeting. In fact, I, I I hope. Let me say this real quick, and then I need to stop for a minute or two and go get sure. my plug so I can plug my laptop back in. Okay. Um, I, we were in a meeting, a conference call with WASP. And uh, I was at the college. I was representing the seminary. John Stead, who was representing the college, was there, and MacArthur was there. And so we're there asking questions, and and the WASP people say, you know, we're we're concerned about the lack of diversity on your board of trustees, which at the <laughs> time was exclusively Caucasian. And John MacArthur, with a straight face, because he, they can't see him, but we can see him. He's with a straight face. So we have diversity. We have we have a Dutchman. <laughs> <laughs> on, our, on our board, John Van Wingerton, a Dutchman. So yeah, we have 
we have diversity. So, and, and I looked at John Stead and John Stead looked at me and we just, what in the world, please make this stop. You know? <laughs> and, and they were just, the people on the, the WASC on the WASC side, they were just astounded. They, mm-hmm. they, they didn't know what to say. Yeah. And I actually talked to one of them later afterwards and I apologize. I said, I have no idea what he was talking about. But uh, it, it, he said, they said, well, was he kidding? Was he laughing at when you were there? He says, no, he's completely serious. Wow. Uh, let me. Uh, <sighs> yeah, go ahead. Take, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And, and while we do that, I'll go ahead. And uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm hoping you all are being informed about what we are uh, doing. Again, Dr. Dennis Swanson, he's been here before. Uh, but every time I'm, I, this is the second time I've had him on. And it seems like every time I bring him back, uh, he brings up more information and, and, and new uh, insight to what we are dealing with. Because, again, this is this is not somebody that's just has been on the outskirts. This man has been in, in ministry for over 25 years. Uh, he was a part of Grace uh, Church. He was on staff. He's seen things that many of us would probably never see but may have heard about. And I'm waiting for someone to try to discount this brother's testimony. Uh, he, he was also... Um, he also was a, a guest on Julie Royce's uh, podcast, and, and and I would encourage you to go to her her, her website, uh, julieroyce.com, and just type in under the search bar, uh, Dennis Swanson. You can read his story, you can read his uh, testimony and experience, and get and gain more information regarding that as well too. Uh, we have a few more things to cover, and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll be ready to wrap this up. But I just wanted to uh, let you all know that um, these are receipts, ladies and gentlemen. And again, people can deny the facts, but you 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 you'll be a fool to do so. And so, again, uh, Dr. Swanson, as we get ready to almost uh, wrap, we got a couple more clips to play okay. for you and get your reaction to this. Um, J.D. Hall and David Morrow, you know those two gentlemen as well. I I know the names. I the I names, not, yes, sir. Uh, I have not listened to either of them extensively. No. Okay. Are you familiar with anything about their work and what they represent? A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Would you consider them to be a, a reliable, a credible source? No. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. Let's see how you respond uh, to this particular story. This is uh, <laughs> I, I call him uh, David No Morals, and I titled this clip "David No Morals Strikes Again." With two kids in the Jeffco school system, Stephanie Schooley ran for and won a school board seat in 2019 right before things got ugly. I did not anticipate that happening, and it was it was a surprise to me. This summer, Schooley and other board members got this anonymous letter, which included a picture of her home. We live in your community, said the letter. We are not concerned with the efficacy of masks or vaccines, only the rights of Jeffco parents to send their children to school while choosing for themselves what's best for their families. The writer urged Schooley to change Jeffco's school mask policy. We expect you to stand up for our rights. Please do the right thing. The intention was to intimidate and to make me feel unsafe and scared. And what we then find is we get these letters if we had no idea. So from now on, you now know it needs to stop. At a subsequent board meeting, Schooley broke down about what she called a veiled threat. Please leave my family out of this. A police investigation was launched to find out who was behind the letters and if they broke the law. It's gone too far. Who wrote those letters? Oh, I wrote those letters. Yeah, that was me. You wrote those letters. Yep. It was apparently fingerprints on the letters that led investigators to David Morrill, a parent and anti-mask advocate, who explained to me why he sent unsigned letters. So it wasn't just me. I didn't, want, I, didn't, I didn't want them to think that I was just speaking for myself. What were you trying to prove by taking pictures of their house and then sending them pictures of their own homes? Well, again, that we all live in the same neighborhood, that I was actually there, that I cared enough to want to speak to them personally. Morrill acknowledges he never spoke to a single board member in person at their homes. You don't see going to the school board members' homes and taking pictures of their homes and sending those to them as being over the line or a bit of an invasion? No, no, I don't think so. I I didn't certainly didn't see it that way at the time. It's unfortunate that, that they feel that way. Yeah, just just a callous, non not you know, non caring attitude. Uh, this guy, you know, he he reminds yeah. me of his of his of his idol, uh, Phil Johnson, when he did it when he doxed Julie Royce. Well, I I wonder if I wonder how he'd feel and his family would feel if if people were going to his house and taking pictures and sending him, you know, anonymous letters. 
Uh, it, yeah. it, it's that's um, it's it's too bad they didn't put him in jail. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's where he, that's where you belong. Um, this last uh, these last three clips. This is gonna probably upset you um, because this is, I believe, hits right below the belt, uh, below the belt, and um, flagrant disregard for uh, those who have been uh, abused, and and then to to ascribe, uh, subscribe blame to uh, ascribe blame to uh, to uh, victims uh, of abuse. These people, I, I, in my mind, these people cannot be Christians if this is how you how you think. So these last three clips, uh, sir, and then I will let you comment on the other side. If you remove the wife's testimony from Julie Roy's article, the article doesn't exist. It vaporizes. Like it, ninety percent of her article is the testimony of the wife, which I'm not necessarily saying is true or untrue, but she she characterizes it like this is established fact. That anybody can go back and say, well, well duh, of course we knew this. Apparently, we, can't. we don't a, know. Apparently, a jury, right, right, found found the wife's testimony on some things to be compelling. Right, and that's right? part. Of, that's part of what so I'm going to fill you in on if, here. If, if 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 we're innocent until proven guilty, then right, you know, we 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 can assume that he's guilty. I think, right? Can't we? I mean, well, we can assume that. Yeah, because because nobody ever nobody ever has a conviction overturned, do they? <laughs> That's the thing. Say, like, you know, well, yeah, OJ was found innocent, so I guess he must not have done it, right? <laughs> I mean, it's provable fact now. It's like, okay, let's not let's not get out over our skis. But she leave she leaves out a couple important yeah, things. Number actually, one, number one, the husband maintains his there. innocence on the sex abuse charges to this day. He says, "I didn't do that." And there was no physical evidence that he did. That was another part of the part of part of the red flag for me was there's no evidence of this. And I, and I realize that in a lot of these kind of cases, you know, especially when the when the accusations come to light with children years down the road, there can't be any physical evidence. But that's it's something that readers probably should have been aware of. The other the other part of this, other than it's him, something that it's something that women and, and mothers should be aware of. Yeah. Can I just hey, hey Julie Royce? Let me just really tick you off. Uh, it's the mom's <laughs> fault that this happened if this actually happened. Because yeah. that's the mom's role. Yeah. Is to the, protect the kids. Right. How did she not know? I I don't know. I mean, I don't want to re adjudicate, but she definitely bears some responsibility and there's some patriarchy for you, lady. Yeah. Dr. Swanson, I, I that, well, that, that angered me to no end. It's it's absurd. Unfortunately, I've I've heard it all before. The idea that um uh, did you did you see the um, something? I think it was last week. There were pictures of um, some warning signs put up at Cedarville University on the mirrors. No, and uh. the, the ladies, you know, it was basically um, uh, um, in the ladies' restroom. It said something to the effect: "Have I done anything to you know make my make my boyfriend think we should you know we." We do things that we had agreed not to do, mm. and it, it's just absurd. Yeah, uh, the the idea that a person who gets raped it's is somehow their fault because of how they dressed or whatever they is is a, a, a horribly offensive. Yeah, and the the it, that it's her fault because she didn't protect her kids. When you've got a whole church structure telling her not yeah. to protect her kids, right. basically because they're making her go into a an unsafe situation, mm -hmm. they're not they're not supporting her, they're not giving her a safe place to go to, to to uh, escape or to at least uh, uh, where could she go? Where, where what right. what did they provide for her to go to to be safe? Why they tried to work things out. You know, right. they didn't. They just said, right. go back and have faith. Yep. Yep. You suffer for I, Christ. Yeah. I, and, and there's nothing wrong with having faith, but um, I, 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 you, you can't, it, it, it's that kind of counseling, which is not, not the it's stuff not biblical I, at all. It's not biblical counseling. It's not the biblical counseling that I was familiar with. Yeah. And uh, the, to treat people, to treat victims of crimes as though they're the ones 
if it hadn't been for you, this wouldn't have happened. Well, that's um, patently false. Yeah. And uh, then uh, uh, you you uh, downplay the the role of uh, you know, and and it's not that he was just found guilty. Right. He, he was found guilty and convicted. And he was sent he was sentenced to 21 years to life. Yes. Um, I was a policeman a long time. I understand how that part of it works. You don't, you don't get a sentence like that if there's any doubt in the judge's mind as mm. to what happened. And you don't get your parole denied, you know, for another 10 years. Uh, if you've been a good person, and especially if you've been a good person in prison. Right. So there's whatever whatever's gone on with that. I mean, he he's a bad person. Like I said, he's exactly where he belongs, and it and it's not her fault in the least. It's the church's fault for not stepping in and giving her good counsel and getting her protected. She put her faith in that church, and that church let her down. Yeah, exactly. Yes, he did. Um, I, I I was remember I reminded you of this story, um, and I'll just share it with the with the viewers here. Um, ironically. You know, we were talking before the live, and I, I had mentioned to you a report uh, of John MacArthur warning Moody um, years ago regarding James McDonald uh, because mm -hmm. of James McDonald's behavior and things of that nature and his, and his uh, um, endorsing and supporting people who are heretics and all of that. John MacArthur refused to attend the, the, uh, the event that was hosted by Moody because he said that, quote, the conflicts James need to resolve involves serious concerns that other besi others besides me have raised about his character and doctrine. It involves charges against him from people who are or have been part of his ministry. And this was an email conversation between him him, and uh, I believe it was Jerry Jenkins, I believe it was. Uh, let's yeah. See. yeah, Jerry Jenkins from Left Behind series. Um, <clears throat> and so they had, a, they had a conversation uh, back in 2000. Uh, I believe in 13. Yes, 2013. It was Founders Week's conference. And uh, John, John MacArthur said if, if James White, I mean James White, if James McDonald, excuse me, was it was in attendance, that he would not attend the, the conference. He did not want to have anything to do with, with the conference if he was going to be there. And I told you, and I mentioned to you, Dr. Swanson, I found it to be rather ironic that people can attend the Masters or to attend the, 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 attend the, the Shepherds Conference Every year, knowing what John MacArthur is, his sex, uh, his his um, uh, abuse scandals uh, that he has been protecting uh, pedophiles, he's been protecting child molesters and wife beaters, uh, and he's been doing this for decades, protecting these men, and and people still go to the conferences. They they still you know defend him to this very day. But ironically, he didn't he didn't want to be involved to be a part of any ministry or any conference or any function that involved a man whose character and doctrine he said. Uh, has help was concerned. Yeah. I, well, it, you know, you can you can use the uh, the broken clock analogy. Yes. You know, even broken clocks right twice a day. That's right. But um, it, it's. Uh, but you're right. I mean, he it's covered up. They they two people who should have two on the pastoral staff who otherwise would have been probably convicted of failing to make proper reports, except that the statute of limitation had run out on it because they covered it up. Um, and, and my opinion sure. um, is churches and church staffs should not be exempt from mm. mandatory reporting laws. Amen. Uh, there, Amen. There is, there is nothing, nothing biblical. There is nothing if you become aware of it, the church has a higher responsibility for the for the safety of the community than one soul that they'll be able to work with later. Yeah, um, you, you've got to protect other people, especially children, women, and and the the the, the widows and orphans. How many times does the New Testament talk about? Come on, brother. Them? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And 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 even even if even if it was not. Even if it was not a part of the law, the Bible makes it clear that we are to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. We're to love our neighbor as ourselves. How would you feel if someone had the ability and the power to protect you and take care of you, or, or you know, speak on your behalf and they didn't? You know, exactly. Um, so the principle is clear, and 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 like you said, they they refuse to submit 
uh, themselves to the to the authority of the scriptures, and then they tried to hide behind legal technicalities uh, yep. to protect their own corrupt uh, ministry. And I consider that I consider it to be corrupt. And uh, I, I believe, and in closing, Doctor Swanson, that um, we should not um, let up on um, sounding the alarm as much as we possibly can, because you know we, we have individuals and people that are. I mean, if they if they if they're not encouraged by what we're doing or they feel that they don't have a voice then it, it, it's, it's even more of a defeating battle um and, sure. and and then you have now uh individuals that are in positions of leadership and have positions and platforms and they're not saying anything they're, they're not saying well, a word and and you had a, another case at the college where a girl was raped at the college yes and instead of the proper Title IX reports being made and things like that, the church stepped in and took the whole counseling thing away from the college. Um, completely inappropriate. And then in the, in the counseling session, you know, they, they put them both together in the same room and the girl was made to apologize. To the rapist. For her, to the rapist for, you know, enticing him. Yep. Um, it, it's, they're, they're, the counselors are fortunate this was not my daughter. And, and, and again, <laughs> so what, what do you say? And, I, and I'll just I'll just ask this question. Um, and I've asked every guest that I've had on the on the uh, on the platform and on the, sh on the on the broadcast. Would you uh, would you go to Grace Community Church if Eileen Gray were your daughter? Absolutely not. Oh, I mean, would I go attend the church? Right. Would you attend oh, no, Grace Community Church? If Eileen Gray were your daughter, knowing what you know about the church and its abuse scandals and things of that nature. No, and I would and I would, you know, sell my last pair of shoes to pay for legal counsel to sue them into oblivion. Mm. So but, it would not but be that's just me. You know, it's, it's both of us. And I think it's every real man that would have the uh the, the mentality. Um and even if it were even if it weren't not my daughter. I believe mm -hmm. if I'm aware of abuse or mistreatment of a fellow image Absolutely. bearer, you know, um, I would not want anything to do with that ministry or those who defend mm -hmm. or support them. Uh, and yeah. I'm pretty sure you, it resonates with you and, and you would probably affirm the same thing as well. Yeah. The, 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 the idea that, and, and if people knew this at the church, the idea that money that they were putting in the offering plate somehow was going to David Gray mm. in prison um, would just infuriate uh, anyone who was paying attention to life. Yeah. But uh, of course they don't, they, they remember the p people can't see the books. So right. no one would ever know. Yeah. Dr. Swanson, any final words, any words of exhortation, uh, any words of encouragement to those who are maybe um, who may watch this, who have uh, gone through abuse, who was who was struggling, trying to, you know, find answers to uh, to these things and, and may even have a hard time, you know, trusting the church as to what they've gone through. Any 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 words? Of well, encouragement, it, so? You know, God is there for all for all of it. And 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 that's that sounds trite, but it. it there are good people out there. There are good counselors. There are good churches that will, you know, put their arm around you and help. And and don't despair of of getting help. Don't despair of of um, uh, getting on the other side of it. So some things takes a long time. You know, yeah. I I, I uh, when I was in, when I was an LA police when I, I killed someone in the line of duty, mm. and and that uh, that took a while to get over. Wow. And um, because it, it's, you know, it was a, you know, clear cut their way. You know, he was shooting yeah. at me, so I yeah. felt obligated yeah. to shoot back. But it, right. it, it's right. still, that's, that's, a, that's a big thing. And yeah. to be a victim of, mm -hmm. of crime to, to, especially abuse, especially children and wives who are abused by a, a, a husband or someone who is supposed to take care of them, a father, yeah. a parent. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. a long time to get over and, and it, it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's more than, you know, here, you know, memorize these three verses and um, go pray and, and it'll all be better tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, life doesn't work that way. Right. That's right. I wonder, you know, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Job got over all of the things that happened to him, maybe his whole life. Amen.
Yeah, you definitely get over those ten kids he lost. That's for sure. Well, exactly, exactly. And so yeah. it's a, it's a, but there are people out there to help, and and there yeah. are people that, uh, um, who will you know put their arm around you and and give you the support and counsel and help that you need that that's biblical and safe and solid. Amen. Amen. Any, any, uh, any, if one, someone wanted to get in contact with you or reach out to you, Dr. Swanson, how could they, how could they do so if you would like to, uh, reach um, out to you could put my email address up. It's N O U S five, six at iCloud.com. Um, I, I'm going to be, uh, traveling. I'm in Florida right now with my, at my son's house and I'm going to be traveling starting, uh, Sunday for a while. And, going out to California and see my mom. Oh, wow. That's good. So, uh, N O U S five, six. Oh, duh. I'm sorry. Let me delete that. <laughs> <laughs> scratch that y'all scratch that N O U S. <laughs> see there. Oh my goodness. N O U S five, six at, at, at iCloud, iCloud.com. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. This is, this is the updated version right there. <laughs> yep. You got it. There it is. All right. Dr. Swanson, thank you so much, sir, for uh, your time and, 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 and it even going out of your way to uh, to have this interview. I, I, I pray that people will be, be blessed and uh, encouraged by this. Uh, I believe that it will definitely uh, resonate with many and uh, and maybe even challenge a lot of us who who are sitting on the fence regarding the subject of, of abuse of abuse and confronting it. Uh, within our churches. And so uh, yeah. God's blessings to you and your family. Have a safe uh, weekend. And uh, Dr. Swanson, I'll be talking to you again soon. Good. And 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 blessings on you, Seiko, and your ministry and the channel and all of the things that you're, the people that you're able to reach and see that I, I you know, and with what I do, I, I would never be able to uh, have the impact that you have with your uh, podcasts and your, uh, and your YouTube channel. So uh, Lord's blessings on you for all the good work you do. Thank you, sir. Have a blessed one. Take care. Yes, sir. Right now. Uf, eso fue bombas tras bombas tras bombas. Y como ustedes podrán ver, MacArthur no escribió su Biblia. Es una mentira. MacArthur nunca ha escrito un libro en su vida. MacArthur no tiene un doctorado tampoco en oficial. Él es doctor honorífico. Ustedes podrán ver que muchas de las cosas como MacArthur se presenta o lo presentan es una mentira. No lo dije yo, lo dijo una persona que trabajó con él, que estuvo íntimamente vinculado con el ministerio de John MacArthur y que es testigo ocular de las cosas que sucedieron. Si usted le ha abierto los ojos a este video, yo le pido que me deje un like, que se suscriba a este canal y que vea las notas del video donde podrá ver dónde poder encontrarme, como también cómo apoyar este canal. Y también le invito a que deje su comentario abajo. ¿De qué es lo que le ha parecido todo esto que ha hablado Dennis Swanson con respecto al ministerio, su experiencia con el ministerio de John MacArthur y lo que ahora sabemos por medio de otras, de, de otras fuentes como sería Julie Royce, que la han condenado, que han dicho que es liberal, que han dicho que es una mentirosa, pero ninguno la ha llevado a corte. Y el único que la llevó, James McDonald, que, que nunca he hecho yo un video acerca de eso porque es irrelevante en el mundo de habla hispana, pero fue grandísimo en el mundo de habla inglesa. James McDonald perdió. Y por eso es que nadie la lleva a corte. Porque Julie Royce, lo que ella dice, lo puede comprobar en corte. Eso es lo que estos personajes no pueden y por lo tanto no lo hacen. Y como cuando dijeron que a mí también me iban a llevar a corte, cuando Will Grant dijo que me iba a llevar a la corte de la familia de, de, de Charles Stanley porque yo eh, dije algo con respecto a lo que pasó, también un abuso en su iglesia que él lo encubrió. Y eso era de conocimiento público desde 2014. Yo no dije nada nuevo, simplemente lo dije en español. Eso fue todo. Pero en inglés eso ya se sabe. Y si lo dije en español, no importa difamar. Si es una difamación, no importa ser en español o inglés. Las cosas siempre se pueden llevar a corte. Pero ¿cómo me van a llevar a corte a mí? Si es algo de conocimiento público y que sea y que si no y si cuando yo hablé acerca de eso, también se dio una compensación. ¿Cómo me, van a, ¿Cómo me van a acusar a mí de algo que en la corte ya dijo que sí es cierto y que dieron una compensación? En fin, la gente quiere creer lo que ellos quieren creer. Y, no, y como Dennis Swanson, como mi persona, Julie Royce y muchos otros, nosotros solo realmente reportamos la verdad con hechos con hechos. 
Así que de nuevo le invito a que me deje un like, a que se suscriba a este canal, a que vea las notas del video, dónde pueden encontrar, cómo poder apoyar este, este canal y también dejarnos su comentario qué piensa usted acerca de todo esto. Que Dios le bendiga y hasta la próxima.